In an abandoned factory, four young cheerleaders are being held hostage. Kevin Wendell Crum, or Patricia, is attending to them. Kevin is a dissociative identity disorder or DID patient with 24 personalities. Patricia is one of his personalities who comes to the light or is in control. The newest one appeared three weeks before, a super strong and animal-like personality, called the Beast. Meanwhile, David Dunn appears at the house of two young content creators. He strikes them as they have just assaulted a bypasser on the street for video content. David has near unlimited strength and the ability to see the crimes of people he touches. Since he discovered this, he has been acting as a vigilante for 15 years and is called the Overseer. His son, Joseph, helps him in tracking and finding information online. Joseph tracks down the information about the missing cheerleaders. Three weeks before, the same case of kidnapping happened where the beast was exploited. The beast kidnaps young girls to feed on them, in other words, kill them. David runs into Hedwig, the nine-year-old personality of Kevin, on his way to search for the hostages. His hands brushes and he sees the vision of young girls inside the abandoned factory. According to Joseph's instructions, he goes to the area and frees the girls. At the same time, the beast takes over the control and charges in. They scuffle and attack each other brutally. But David is stronger. When the beast tries to crush him, he flings them out the window. They land on the streets below. Unaffected, they get up and charge at each other again. Suddenly, a group of police appears, and lights start flashing. It scares the beast and he immediately interchanges with Hedwig personality. The beast's weakness is light. The leader of the group, a mysterious woman named Ellie Staple, holds them arrested. They are brought to Raven Hill Memorial, a mental institution. In Ravel Hill, there is another man in prison named Elijah Price. Elijah was born with a rare disorder that makes his bones frail and easy to break. Thus, he is called Mr. Glass. But, his strength lies in his head, he is super smart. Unfortunately, he has an obsession with being a villain who fights heroes with intelligence. Therefore, he masterminded many accidents to find people with super strength, like David Dunn. David is the sole survivor of the train accident he created around 15 years ago. They met after that accident, and Mr. Glass guided David to embrace the super abilities he has. However, when David discovers his crimes, he turns him over to the authorities. David is placed in an isolated room with water jets that will go off if he attempts to escape. His weakness is water since he was once drowned. Kevin is held in a room with panels of bright lights. The lights will flash whenever he gets near the door or shows any form of violence. The beast form is forced to interchange with other personalities every time he encounters flashing lights. Mr. Glass is fed with sedatives to prevent him from using his smart head. Although he sits in a wheelchair due to his fragile body, he once found a way to set the institution on fire to escape. Ellie Staple is a psychiatrist. She has them under the impression they are just normal people with delusions about having superpowers. She tries to convince all of them that they are mentally ill. They are given three days to reflect on their delusional mindset. If they are still insistent on their beliefs, a psychological research procedure will be conducted. Later, an anxious Joseph comes to Staple. He tries to convince her that his father is not the real overseer, that he is just pulling a prank. Staple is not buying his lies. She reverts to the conviction that his father is just a delusional man with a superhero ego. Joseph goes home wryly and starts researching Kevin and Mr. Glass to find proof of their super abilities. He needs affirmation that his father indeed has superpowers. During the research, he is overwhelmed by the shocking information he discovers about Kevin. At the same time, Staple visits Casey, the sole survivor of the kidnapping case the Beast committed a few weeks before. Same as she told Joseph, she also mentions that the Beast's power is just a form of delusion. She assures Casey that the Beast is now kept away and will not harm her anymore. Out of expectation, Casey insists on meeting Kevin. While young, Kevin was left alone with his abusive mother when his father disappeared. The pain from being abused mentally and physically caused him to split his personality. In other words, his personality exploits to protect him. Due to trauma, Kevin has always been resisting to be in the light, and letting other personalities in control. Casey knows and sympathizes with him. She is also a victim of abuse, which is why the Beast let her go. The Beast does not kill people who undergo suffering. In the room, she meets Hedwig personality, and she calls out for Kevin. Kevin will appear when his full name, Kevin Wendell Crum, is called. She talks out to Kevin to take control of his personality interchange to put a stop to the Beast's crimes. However, Kevin strongly resists the idea in tears and interchanges again with another personality. Casey goes back in a setback. Throughout the time, Staple also tries to appeal to Mr. Glass' mother, Madam Price, deducing the beliefs of his son as delusion. But, 
she constantly fails, neither Madame Price, Joseph, nor Casey is convinced. Staple feels that the research procedure is urgently needed more than she thought. The three men are gathered inside a room. David is unnerved by the presence of Elijah, the man who created the train accident he was in. The procedure starts with a psychological test. During the meeting, Staple states firmly that their delusions are simply strengthened by a series of coincidences. She recalls Kevin's past abuse from his mother. She brings back David's memories of being drowned intentionally. The feeling of pain and helplessness is what caused them to have the idea of being a superhero. She then reminds Mr. Glass of a time in which he broke his arm on a ride at a carnival, bringing to mind the extreme fragility of his bones. She provides a lot of evidence that affirms all these superpower things are delusional. They all go quiet, and staple as people send them back to their rooms. Later that night, Mr. Glass breaks free from his room. He hasn't been taking the sedatives and instead changing them with aspirins. He remained clear-headed all this time and has been planning for a long time. He goes to the security room and investigates David and Kevin. He also discovers the information about Kevin that once shocked Joseph. He meets Kevin with Patricia's personality and control. Mr. Glass promises that he can get Kevin out of this cell as long as he can see the form of the beast. Patricia agrees, and Mr. Glass promises to carry out the plan the night after. The next morning, Mr. Glass opens up his eyes and realizes he's being brought to an operating room. Staple, who has discovered his breakout, performs a brain-dead operation. She needs to prevent his brilliant head to plan anything that puts her at a disadvantage. What she doesn't know is, Mr. Glass has planned to be discovered and captured. He also sabotaged the machine for the operation the night before, so the operation failed. He still has his intelligence intact. After the operation and back in his room, an attendant comes in to serve food. Suddenly, Mr. Glass slashes his throat with a shard of broken glass. Mr. Glass escapes and goes to Kevin. He deactivates the hypnotic lights. They go to an operating room. Mr. Glass is so excited to see Kevin interchange with the beast. It feels like a dream comes true for him. The beast doesn't hurt Mr. Glass realizing he has been suffering all his life. He only kills people who don't know the pain of suffering. Mr. Glass explains his plan to have the beast and David battle each other at the top of the new highest skyscrapers that appears on the news. Then, the whole world will see and believe that superheroes do exist. The beast agrees and they proceed to the security room. There, they use the microphone to talk to David through the speaker in his room. Same as what he had done in Kevin's room, Elijah deactivates the water jets in David's room. He tempts David to show his superpower by breaking the metal door. Upon David's refusal, Mr. Glass threatens to blow up the skyscraper if he doesn't fight the beast. They leave David alone to think it over. Out of no choice, he reluctantly breaks through the door. The beast wheels Mr. Glass down the hallway. They beat down every security force that tries to hinder them. Staple who discovers this immediately calls for backup. When they go outside, a group of armed police promptly arrives. Two police officers show up but the beast easily takes them down. Staple, Madam Price, Joseph, and Casey arrive in time to see David come out from the building. Mr. Glass sits back and watches enthusiastically as the beast charges at David. They engage in a brutal fight. Staple sees this and calls for security. Casey rushes out and calls for Kevin, but he is too engaged in the fight. More armed police arrive and try to stop the fight. David manages to lock up some policemen in a compartment to prevent them from being killed by the beast. He tries to save as many people as he can from the beast. But some of them are unfortunately caught by the beast and killed. Mr. Glass sees this and reminds the beast about David's weakness and a water tank nearby. At this time, Joseph suddenly interrupts and gets their attention. He once tracked down Kevin's information and discovered an explosive twist. Mr. Glass, who also knows what he is going to say, tries to stop him. Joseph reveals that Kevin's father was on the same train as David. He didn't disappear out of the blue but died in the accident. Thus, Mr. Glass is the mastermind of the train accident and is responsible for his father's death. In other words, Mr. Glass is the one who technically creates the beast. The beast thanks Mr. Glass for creating him. But, he stated that he exists to protect Kevin at all costs. Then, he punches Mr. Glass in the stomach and fatally wounds him. Mr. Glass exclaims in pain and falls out of his wheelchair. The beast throws David into the water tank and tries to kill him. David manages to break through the wall of the tank and lands on the lawn. The beast tells David to finish their fight at the top of the skyscraper. He begins running in that direction. Staple asks Casey to stop the beast in case any other violence occurs. Casey catches up to the beast and tries to call his name Kevin Wendell Crumb. The beast calms down and interchanges with the weak Kevin. Once his defenses are down, Staple asks one of her men to shoot Kevin. 
The bullet pierces through his stomach. The shot is fatal, and he dies slowly in Casey's arms. He finally finds his peace in the light. More armed police show up and Joseph asks them to help his father as he is very weak. Two police pull him away from David. Unseen by Joseph, an armed man with a clover tattoo on his wrist grabs David. He drags him over to a puddle filled with water from the tank. David is drowned forcibly in it, too weak to fight back. Staple interrupts and holds David's hand. It is revealed that the same clover symbol is also engraved on her wrist. With his ability, David now knows that she's part of a secret society. This society has existed since almost the beginning of time, containing many people. They keep super-powered individuals' existence unknown to the world by any means necessary. She mentions that they don't take sides between good or bad superhuman. They either try to convince them to live a normal life or terminate them. They don't need gods among humans. And as a result, David is killed. Staple then approaches Mr. Glass who lies, bleeding profusely, in a mess. She also discloses her identity to him. After she walks away, Madame Price kneels beside Mr. Glass. Mr. Glass croaks that he is not a mistake. Madame Price then affirms that he is spectacular. He smiles wryly and closes his eyes. Staples thinks she succeeds in her mission and deletes the footage of all security cameras. But upon further investigation, the engineer discovers the videos were being streamed to a private site. Mr. Glass had hacked the computer since Staple told him that there are security cameras all over the building. Thus, it was never Mr. Glass planned to escape the facility and force David to fight at the top of the skyscraper. Mr. Glass always suspected that the society has been suppressing the existence of super people by killing them. Staple realizes that she's been played by Mr. Glass and breaks down screaming. Madam Price, Joseph, and Casey receive copies of the recordings. They upload it to the internet. It is revealed to the whole world that people with super abilities do exist. It is also exposed that the secret society has been trying to erase their existence. Now, the world will begin to believe there may be a lot of people like David, Kevin, or Mr. Glass, that possess the power to change the world. Hit the like button if you like the story, comment, and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching, and see you, next time.